the term phonation has slightly different meanings depending on the subfield of phonetics. Among some phoneticians, phonation is the process by which the vocal folds produce certain sounds through quasi-periodic vibration. This is the definition used among those who study laryngeal anatomy and physiology and speech production in general. Phoneticians in other subfields, such as linguistic phonetics, call this process voicing, and use the term phonation to refer to any oscillatory state of any part of the larynx that modifies the airstream, of which voicing is just one example. Voiceless and supraglottal phonations are included under this definition. Voicing, the phonatory process, or voicing, occurs when air is expelled from the lungs through the glottis, creating a pressure drop across the larynx. When this drop becomes sufficiently large, the vocal folds start to oscillate. The minimum pressure drop required to achieve phonation is called the phonation threshold pressure, and for humans with normal vocal folds, it is approximately 2 a euro 3 centimeters H2O. The motion of the vocal folds during oscillation is mostly lateral, though there is also some superior component as well. However, there is almost no motion along the length of the vocal folds. The oscillation of the vocal folds serves to modulate the pressure and flow of the air through the larynx, and this modulated air flow is the main component of the sound of most voiced phones. The sound that the larynx produces is a harmonic series. In other words, it consists of a fundamental tone accompanied by harmonic overtones, which are multiples of the fundamental frequency. According to the saucier euro filter theory, the resulting sound excites the resonance chamber that is the vocal tract to produce the individual speech sounds, the vocal folds will not oscillate if they are not sufficiently close to one another, are not under sufficient tension or under too much tension, or if the pressure drop across the larynx is not sufficiently large. In linguistics, a phone is called voiceless if there is no phonation during its occurrence. In speech, voiceless phones are associated with vocal folds that are elongated, highly tensed, and placed laterally when compared to vocal folds during phonation. Fundamental frequency, the main acoustic cue for the percept pitch, can be varied through a variety of means. Large scale changes are accomplished by increasing the tension in the vocal folds through contraction of the crocothyroid muscle. Smaller changes in tension can be affected by contraction of the thyroarytenoid muscle or changes in the relative position of the thyroid and cricoid cartilages, as may occur when a larynx is lowered or raised either volitionally or through movement of the tongue to which the larynx is attached via the hyoid bone. In addition to tension changes, fundamental frequency is also affected by the pressure drop across the larynx, which is mostly affected by the pressure in the lungs and will also vary with the distance between the vocal folds. Variation in fundamental frequency is used linguistically to produce intonation and tone. There are currently two main theories as to how vibration of the vocal folds is initiated, the myelastic theory and the aerodynamic theory. These two theories are not in contention with one another and it is quite possible that both theories are true and operating simultaneously to initiate and maintain vibration. A third theory, the neuroquinaxic theory, was in considerable vogue in the 1950s, but has since been largely discredited. Equals myelastic and aerodynamic theory equals, the myelastic theory states that when the vocal cords are brought together and breath pressure is applied to them, the cords remain closed until the pressure beneath the euro the subglottic pressure euro is sufficient to push them apart allowing air to escape and reducing the pressure enough for the muscle tension recoil to pull the folds back together again. Pressure builds up once again until the cords are pushed apart, and the whole cycle keeps repeating itself. The rate at which the cords open and close a euro the number of cycles per second a euro determines the pitch of the phonation. The aerodynamic theory is based on the Bernoulli energy law in fluids. The theory states that when a stream of breath is flowing through the glottis while the arytenoid cartilages are held together by the action of the intraarytenoid muscles, a push-pull effect is created on the vocal fold tissues that maintains self-sustained oscillation. The push occurs during glottal opening, when the glottis is convergent, whereas the pull occurs during glottal closing, when the glottis is divergent. Such an effect causes a transfer of energy from the airflow to the vocal fold tissues which overcomes losses by dissipation and sustain the oscillation. During glottal closure, 
the airflow is cut off until breath pressure pushes the folds apart and the flow starts up again, causing the cycles to repeat. The textbook entitled My Elastic Aerodynamic Theory of Phonation by Ingo Ties credits Jan Willem van den Berg as the originator of the theory and provides detailed mathematical development of the theory. Equals neurochronaxic theory equals, this theory states that the frequency of the vocal fold vibration is determined by the chronoxy of the recurrent nerve, and not by breath pressure or muscular tension. Advocates of this theory thought that every single vibration of the vocal folds was due to an impulse from the recurrent laryngeal nerves and that the acoustic center in the brain regulated the speed of vocal fold vibration. Speech and voice scientists have long since left this theory as the muscles have been shown to not be able to contract fast enough to accomplish the vibration. In addition, persons with paralyzed vocal folds can produce phonation, which would not be possible according to this theory. Phonation occurring in excised laryngeus would also not be possible according to this theory. State of the glottis, in linguistic phonetic treatments of phonation, such as those of Peter Laidforged, phonation was considered to be a matter of points on a continuum of tension and closure of the vocal cords. More intricate mechanisms were occasionally described, but they were difficult to investigate, and until recently the state of the glottis and phonation were considered to be nearly synonymous. If the vocal cords are completely relaxed, with the arytenoid cartilages apart for maximum airflow, the cords do not vibrate. This is voiceless phonation, and is extremely common with obstruents. If the arytenoids are pressed together for glottal closure, the vocal cords block the airstream, producing stop sounds such as the glottal stop. In between there is a sweet spot of maximum vibration. Also, the existence of an optimal glottal shape for ease of phonation has been shown, at which the lung pressure required to initiate the vocal cord vibration is minimum. This is modal voice, and is the normal state for vowels and sonorants in all the world's languages. However, the aperture of the arytenoid cartilages, and therefore the tension in the vocal cords, is one of degree between the end points of open and closed and there are several intermediate situations utilized by various languages to make contrasting sounds. For example, Gujarati has vowels with a partially lax phonation called breathy voice or murmured, while Burmese has vowels with a partially tense phonation called creaky voice or laryngealized. Both of these phonations have dedicated IPA diacritics, an under umlaut and under tilde. The Jalapa dialect of Mizitk is unusual in contrasting both with modal voice and a three-way distinction. Note, there was an editing error in the source of this information. The latter two translations may have been mixed up. Javanese does not have modal voice in its stops, but contrasts two other points along the phonation scale, with more moderate departures from modal voice, called slack voice and stiff voice. The muddy consonants in Shanghanese are slack voice. They contrast with Tanui and aspirated consonants. Although each language may be somewhat different, it is convenient to classify these degrees of phonation into discrete categories. A series of seven alveolar stops, with phonations ranging from an open lax to a closed tense glottis, are the IPA diacritics under ring and subscript wedge, commonly called voiceless, and voiced are sometimes added to the symbol for a voiced sound to indicate more lax opening tense closed states of the glottis, respectively. Alsatian, like several Germanic languages, has a typologically unusual phonation in its stops. The consonants transcribed, are partially voiced, the vocal cords are positioned as for voicing, but do not actually vibrate. That is, they are technically voiceless, but without the open glottis usually associated with voiceless stops. They contrast with both modally voiced slash b, d, e slash and modally voiceless slash p, t, k slash in French borrowings, as well as aspirated word initially. If the arytenoid cartilages are parted to admit turbulent airflow, the result is whisper phonation if the vocal folds are adducted, and whispery voice phonation if the vocal folds vibrate modally. Whisper phonation is heard in many productions of French UI and the voiceless vowels of many North American languages are actually whispered. Equals glottal consonants equals, it has long been noted that in many languages, both phonologically and historically, the glottal consonants, e, e, h, 
do not behave like other consonants. Phonetically, they have no manner or place of articulation other than the state of the glottis, glottal closure for e, breathy voice for e, and open air stream for h. Some phoneticians have described these sounds as neither glottal nor consonantal, but instead as instances of pure phonation, at least in many European languages. However, in Semitic languages they do appear to be true glottal consonants. Supraglottal phonation In the last few decades it has become apparent that phonation may involve the entire larynx, with as many as six valves and muscles working either independently or together. From the glottis upward, these articulations are glottal, producing the distinctions described above, ventricular, arytenoid, epiglottopharyngeal, raising or lowering of the entire larynx, narrowing of the pharynx, until the development of fiber optic laryngoscopy, the full involvement of the larynx during speech production was not observable, and the interactions among the six laryngeal articulators is still poorly understood. However, at least two supraglottal phonations appear to be widespread in the world's languages. These are harsh voice, which involves overall constriction of the larynx, and focalized voice, which involves overall expansion of the larynx. The Bo dialect of Dinka has contrastive modal, breathy, focalized, and harsh voice in its vowels, as well as three tones. The ad hoc diacritics employed in the literature are a subscript double quotation mark for focalized voice, I, and underlining for harsh voice, I plus or minus. Examples are, other languages with these contrasts are by, Kabai, Somali. Elements of laryngeal articulation or phonation may occur widely in the world's languages as phonetic detail even when not phonemically contrastive. For example, simultaneous glottal, ventricular, and arytenoid activity has been observed in Tibetan, Korean, Nuchamulf, Nlakipomu, Thai, Sui, Amis, Pain, Arabic, Tigranaya, Cantonese, and Yi. European language examples, in languages such as French, all obstruents occur in pairs, one modally voiced and one voiceless, b, d, g, v, z, e, a, p, t, k, f, s, e, florin. In English, every voiced fricative corresponds to a voiceless one. For the pairs of English stops, however, the distinction is better specified as voice onset time rather than simply voice, in initial position slash bdg slash i only partially voiced while slash ptk slash are aspirated. Certain English morphemes have voiced and voiceless allomorphs, such as the plural, verbal, and possessive endings spelled s and the past tense ending spelled ed voiced and buzzed but voiceless and fished. A few European languages, such as Finnish, have no phonemically voiced obstruents but pairs of long and short consonants instead. Outside of Europe, a lack of voicing distinctions is not uncommon. Indeed, in Australian languages it is nearly universal. In languages without the distinction between voiceless and voiced obstruents, it is often found that they are realized as voiced in voiced environments such as between vowels, and voiceless elsewhere. Vocal registers. Equals phonology equals. In phonology, a register is a combination of tone and vowel phonation into a single phonological parameter. For example, among its vowels, Burmese combines modal voice with low tone, breathy voice with falling tone, creaky voice with high tone, and glottal closure with high tone. These four registers contrast with each other, but no other combination of phonation and tone is found. Equals pedagogy and speech pathology equals. Among vocal pedagogues and speech pathologists, a vocal register also refers to a particular phonation limited to a particular range of pitch which possesses a characteristic sound quality. The term register may be used for several distinct aspects of the human voice, a particular part of the vocal range, such as the upper, middle, or lower registers, which may be bounded by vocal breaks, a particular phonation, a resonance area such as chest voice or head voice, a certain vocal timbre, four combinations of these elements are identified in speech pathology, the vocal fry register, the modal register, the falsetto register, and the whistle register. See also, ballistic syllables, breathy voice, creaky voice, focalized voice, harsh voice, list of language disorders, 
list of phonetics topics, slack voice, stiff voice, strident vowel, vocal resonation, voice onset time, voice organ. References External links, States of the Glottis, University Currency T. Stuttgart Speech Production, a video showing phonation in action.